All right, happy Tuesday, everybody. You are not going to believe this, but I have learned that a media hit was put on my name. Yes, internally, sort of a memo was circulating. Don't talk about Candace Owens anymore. They don't want to report on me. What is up with that? You're not going to believe what I have to share. Plus, later on in the show, something seems to be going on with Justin Bieber. And I think that it has everything to do with the fact that he's a Christian and he's in Hollywood, and that is simply not allowed. Christians in Hollywood, no good. And we're also going to talk about Donald Trump, in case you haven't heard. He is back on the ballot after a major Supreme Court win. And leftists are crying because how could this be? It's that pesky Constitution again. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. All right, guys, so this actually happened, and I'm not really sure what to make of it. I'm just going to do my thing and overshare and tell you guys everything. So recently, as in a couple of months ago, a publication, which I am not going to name, but they are one that used to cover me all the time. They used to cover this show all the time, just a very positive experience and always saying great things about me, suddenly just stopped. I became persona non grata. So I hired someone a couple of weeks ago who had the means to look into this because I was just curious. And I am pretty shocked at what they uncovered. Essentially, there was this effective ban, sort of an internal embargo of sorts on my name. More shocking is the reason behind it, because why, what did I do? Have I changed my stances? Well, among other things, they claimed that I was a, I'm not kidding, quote unquote, Christian nationalist. Yeah, Christian nationalist. What I can tell you also is that I got at least one name that was circulating this idea, and it is very much a person that is a part of what we term here the military industrial complex. So I think that's kind of a weird thing. I thought it was strange because, listen, I am obviously very proudly a Christian, but I don't think any person that watches this show would say that I wear my Christianity on my sleeve. Not that there would be anything wrong with it, but we're not exactly, you know, praying on the show, maybe we should be, given everything that's happening in society. But I would definitely say that any any listener of this show would not be like, oh, Candace Owens is a, a Christian nationalist. Although I don't, I'm not sure I have any problems with either of those terms. I definitely do consider myself to be a nationalist and I am a Christian. But they're they're saying this in a much more dirty way. And I thought about it and I said, where else have I heard that term before? Well, if you're paying attention, you guys, it is everywhere as of late. And I want you to pay very close attention to this because suddenly Christianity is being smeared and libeled and attacked, and they are trying to make it synonymous with white supremacy. Yeah, check this out. All of these articles were published back to back in February. This from PBS, the headline, what is Christian nationalism and why it raises concerns about threats to democracy? (gasps) Here's Axios. Poll, most Americans cool to Christian nationalism as its influence grows. Oh, really? We're conducting polls and we're saying that Christian nationalism is is influential? Another headline here, this is NPR. Christian nationalism's support is strongest in rural conservative states. Hmm. Here's the New York Times. Four ways of looking at Christian nationalism. So again, just to be clear, all of these publications and these headlines came out within the last month. And you're probably going to believe this, but it's also getting the Hollywood spin. It must get the Hollywood treatment. Once the propaganda goes out, it's got to, of course, now appear on our screen. Somebody has to go deep into it to examine the crisis. And the man for the job is apparently Rob Reiner. Yeah, he is directing a new documentary, and it's called God and Country which puts Christian nationalism in America under the spotlight. And so he's doing a tour to promote this new documentary. And he visited, of course, Christiane Omnipore, because she's the number one state journalist over at CNN. And here's what he had to say. Take a listen. Rob Reiner, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. What inspired you to do God and Country about Christian nationalism as a documentary? Because obviously you're really, really, really well known for your fantastic films. Well, you know, I, I've kind of known about this movement for, for quite a while. I mean, back in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, Norman Lear uh, launched an organization called People for the American Way, which focused on this idea that 
the Christian right was going to dictate uh, what we should listen to, uh, what we should not listen to. And uh, it was very disturbing to him. And as time went by, uh, I saw this movement grow, but I didn't realize how powerful it was and how well organized and well funded it was until I uh, read this book called The Power Worshippers by, uh, by Catherine Stewart. And I then realized that this has uh, taken root far more, uh, far more deeply than I had ever thought. Ooh, are you guys scared? Are you, are you shooketh to your cores? You heard him, it's way deeper. I'm sure when you look around of the myriad of issues that are facing our country today, what you're really concerned about is that there might be some Christians that are also in love with their country. They're Christian nationalists. Yeah, I know when you see the drug dealers, the illegals, the criminality, the gang violence, you're going, but it's the Christians that we should definitely be afraid of. So what is this actually? Well, I think it's a further attempt to divide and brainwash Christians, and that has been going on actually for decades. So I'd like to use my platform to encourage Christians to actually learn about your own history. Because if you're like me, you thought Christianity was something that, to be embarrassed of growing up, and that is by design. They used to teach the Bible in classrooms all across the U.S. We used to pray in schools and then lawsuits were filed, and that all went away beginning in the 1960s, and it has been intentional. It's been intentional to divide Christians, to make people like me feel embarrassed, to have had extremely Christian grandparents who wanted us to pray around the dinner table, and they're doing that again. They want you to think that being a Christian now is synonymous with white supremacy. Who is behind it? Well, we know that anything that is demonic— and backwards and satanic will, of course, be sponsored by Hollywood, which is, for the record, demonic and backwards and satanic. And that brings me to Justin Bieber, because something has been going on with him for years, actually. I never really quite pay attention to it. But with everything that we've recently learned about the blackmail ring, what we learned about with Diddy, people are starting to really wonder. So just to bring you up to speed, obviously, I love Justin Bieber. I think his music is amazing. Actually, I hope he goes on an Eras tour. But he was a child when he was brought into the industry. He was discovered on YouTube, super innocent, super young. What was he, maybe 11, 12 years old? So very much a potential victim uh, in the industry of evil. We know that he was mentored by Usher. Usher appeared in his first video. And Usher, just in case you have not been paying attention, was also listed in the recent Diddy uh, documents. Now, again, this is all being alleged, but that producer who filed the lawsuit against Diddy claims that Mr. Combs, Diddy, informed him that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with a rapper that was redacted and an R&B singer that was redacted. Uh, the mystery R&B singer is described as someone who performed at the Super Bowl and has had a successful Las Vegas residency. Well, that leads many people to conclude the person who just performed at the Super Bowl, of course, is Usher. And uh, yeah, he also has or had a Las Vegas residency. Going back to Justin, though, what we know for a fact is that Justin was very innocent when he arrived on the scene, and then he suddenly went through a very intense period of partying. And on multiple occasions, Diddy was with him at the helm, and he didn't look good. In fact, they ended up canceling a tour. It was very clear that he was deep in the throes of something. I would suspect, again, I'm alleging here, that it was some sort of an addiction. And gratefully, he had his life saved, I think, when his then-manager, Scooter Braun, just canceled his tour outright. And then something happened that was a miracle. He met and married, well, he, I think he had met her previously, but he very quickly married his very Christian wife, Haley Bieber. And his world completely changed. And genuinely, I am grateful for that because you don't tend to see that sort of a story in Hollywood. Now, when you see Justin Bieber, he's not that party boy that we saw. Uh, he tends to be attending church. But as I said, we know that Hollywood and the school system as well hates Christianity. And two church-going people in the industry simply cannot be allowed a few days ago, a person named Victor Marx, who is allegedly Justin's pastor, took to the internet and made a very unusual request. So just so you know who Victor Marx is, factually speaking, according to his website, he is a former Marine who was sexually abused throughout his childhood. And because of that, he suffered from extreme PTSD. He then turned to drugs throughout his life. And then he found God and his entire life changed.
Now he dedicates his life to helping other people through the means of finding God, people who have gone through that same experience as him and people who haven't gone through that experience but also are going through things that need God, right? Well, he shared this, Mr. Marks, on his Instagram. First, there was a clip, and it said, Christians, please, when you think of Justin and Haley, take a moment to offer a little prayer for them, to have wisdom, protection, and to draw close to the Lord. And then in the caption, he wrote this, I seldom like to post about certain folks in the limelight because of the negative comments that we get. Eileen and Haley's mom pray often together for J and H, of course, Justin and Haley, and our children as well. There are special challenges that folks in high visibility positions face, and also the enemy doesn't want them to draw closer to Jesus. So often, regardless of the material things or the accolades, they often face spiritual warfare that intensely seeks to shipwreck their faith, marriage, and life in general. So thank you. And then what followed that posting was that it was shared, the, the clip was shared by Haley Bieber's father. So of course the internet has been going, what is going on, what is going on? And I think by the way, that is all of us in the world wondering what is going on. It is so clearly some sort of a spiritual battle that is happening. And every time we get a glimpse of some truth, it seems that the forces unite and more evil happens. And I can't imagine what Justin Bieber knows as a young person that came up in the industry. And he's not the only one. Uh, the people that are in the industry that understand how terrifying it is. Uh, I can't imagine what sort of a pressure he is going through if, if his relationship with God has been strengthened over the years, then I would imagine that the evil that he experienced and the evil that he saw is weighing heavier and heavier on his heart. And so what I would like to say as a quote unquote Christian nationalist uh, to any person that is going through this conflict is to understand that Christians will stand by you if and when you are ready to share the truth. We will be there, we will pray for you, and the entire world, even people that are not Christians, will thank you because we know that there is something very sinister that is going on, um, and we are all suddenly being aware that Christians are being considered an evil because we are perhaps the only people, once we become united, if we actually unite in our faith, that could perhaps conquer a lot of the evil that we are going on. So yeah, there's a hit on me, and I would say very much a hit on Christians at large. Pay attention and pray. That's all I'm going to say about that. When we say something is free, it should mean precisely that. No strings attached, no hidden costs, and no fine print to decipher. When you switch to Pure Talk today, you'll get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. There is no four-line requirement and no activation fee, just a free Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just $35 a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and a mobile hotspot. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. It's the same coverage you know and love, but for half the price of the other guys. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. Plus, with Pure Talk, you know you're spending your hard-earned money with a company that aligns with your values. Let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Go to puretalk.com slash Owens to claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Owens to switch to my cell phone company. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. Before we get into that first topic, you know what I'm already going to say, so just do it. If you are watching, please subscribe to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that pesky constitution again. Darn it, what are we gonna do about that pesky constitution? Every time they get around and wanting to impart some evil, and then it makes its way up to the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court's duty is to interpret the Constitution. Well, it turns out that, yes, this is a land that is still ruled by that Constitution. No greater example of that than what's recently happened. So in case you haven't been following it because there's just been so many court cases, the people that are telling us that there's no way that the election was rigged in 2020, despite radically changing the way that we vote because of COVID um, are now just outwardly trying to rig the election. States that are saying we're just going to take Trump off the ballot. Utterly absurd. I mean, it's so absurd. It is crazy that this even had to be brought uh, to the Supreme Court at all. But this is just the game that they're playing, right? While, while accusing the other guy, meh, 
Meh, my January 6th. Meh. Trump tried to overthrow the democracy. Meh. And they're doing exactly that, trying to overthrow democracy in various states. And so obviously this went all the way up to the Supreme Court. It was a, a very important matter. Are we going to allow these states to do that? And the Supreme Court came back and said no in a 9-0 decision. They voted unanimously that the decision to remove Trump off of the Colorado ballot is unconstitutional because of course it is. When you are running for president, you are running to hold federal office, right? That's federal office. So the states cannot therefore decide to remove you from the ballot. Now, if this is a state case, if he was running to be the state senator, some of the Supreme Court uh, justices would have perhaps agreed with them And here is what they wrote in their unanimous decision. Uh, The five-justice majority opinion was written to say that we conclude that states may disqualify persons holding or attempting to hold state office, but states have no power under the Constitution to enforce Section 3 with respect to federal offices, especially the presidency. The opinion states, yep, that makes sense. Major win for America is what Trump wrote on social media But I actually disagree. I think the fact that this even went all the way up to the Supreme Court is a major loss for America. We should never be here, right? No matter how I feel about somebody that is running for office on the Democrat side, no matter how vindictive or horrible or backwards or wrong I think that individual is, the American people should decide. We should not have states saying, I'm just going to simply remove them from the ballot so you don't even get to make that decision. But worry not, people, because CNN has— has. is responding, I suppose, to this decision. And they are still CNN. And that, ladies and gentlemen, warms my heart. Take a listen to what they had to say about this decision. Unfortunately for America, the court isn't necessarily wrong that this is the way the framers wanted it to be. They wanted Congress, the people who are closest to their constituents, to be able to make the, the rules of the laws. That doesn't change the fact that because of gerrymandering in the House and all kinds of other issues, um, they're not doing their job on a lot of these big issues. I I agree it's very unlikely, uh, close to impossible that Congress will take action. But this is now a fair question that Manu Raju, Melanie Zanona, should be asking members of Congress. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to pass legislation that would give us rules for how this works? It could only be in the future. That woman really just said, unfortunately for America, the court isn't necessarily wrong. Unfortunately for America, they are right. This is what the framers intended. They intended uh, to build a system in which you couldn't just radically overthrow the Constitution. And we are going to have to think about, that guy points out, how we're going to combat that in the future. Maybe Congress will help. Maybe we will we will radically transform the Constitution itself to include a clause that says, if we don't like Orange Man because Orange Man is bad— then we can just not put him on the ballot. That's what he's hoping for. That's what CNN is outwardly hoping for. Again, these are the same individuals that will try to tell you that it is Trump that is overthrowing democracy. I can't think of a more clear example of attempting to thwart democracy than this. But again, while I am glad that he won, because he should have won, and that is what is right, and I am glad that the Supreme Court is still doing their job correctly, it does make me worry that we have even gotten to this space in America. All right, guys, moving on and also talking about unfortunate things that are happening throughout America. I routinely talk about this obsession that people have with hanging on to their youth. Listen, I don't mind women, uh, obviously women wanting to be beautiful, but I just want to make sure women and men, because men are also getting in on this trend as well, which is deeply upsetting because men do not need Botox. They age like fine wine. The wrinkles really work on guys. But I just want to make sure everybody's aware that you cannot hold on to your youth. I guess it's actually, it is implausible. Like eventually you, you you have to age and then it starts getting scary because people are doing, you know, a couple of injections here and there and maybe that looks okay. But then they get older and your face is actually going to start heading downward and that freakish, clownish look starts to happen as like gravity is being defied or attempted to be defied by a bunch of filler and Botox and tucks. And it just starts to look really scary. And what ends up happening is that you end up aging yourself when you get too much done. I don't know why anybody's women are doing this at all because when you talk to men, men prefer a more natural look. I'm not saying tiny little tweaks here and there, but 
it's just, it's become a, I think, in my opinion, too much. And I don't, people don't like to hear that, but it is the truth. So guess what happened? Obviously, everything happens on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I do report on TikTok all the time. Well, there is a young woman who I would say is like a Botox influencer. She, the nips, the tucks, getting everything done that everyone is doing. She likes to show the procedures that she gets. And she was stunned, and the internet was also stunned to learn her age. She was stunned by how old people thought she was. And so what happened is people assumed she was 45 getting all these procedures, around 45. And it turns out she's 22. Take a look at this young woman and listen to her. And just to tell you what it says here on the side of the TikTok that she is responding to, a user commented that they thought that she was pushing 45. Take a listen to what she has to say to that. Respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s. 22. Yeah, shocker. When I first started TikTok and started making filler videos, like come get filler with me or Botox, I used to get these hate comments all the time. There's just people on TikTok that absolutely hate cosmetic procedures and believe that you shouldn't get them. And again, I think it's a personal preference. Like if I want to get filler, I feel like no one should stop you from getting filler because it's your own face. But people always told me that I look older and I get it. I look older. I might act older. Um, but 45? And before I used to cry over these comments and used to delete them and block the account. But now I'm just like, I just laugh at it because I know it's not true. <laughs> um, but I do respect your opinion. I'm looking sideways here because, because my director is looking and going, wow, he's very surprised that she is 22. And I hate to say this, but her name is Shauna Faith, by the way. She's from California, and there's a, definitely a culture of this, especially in New York and California. She does not factually look to be 22 years old. If I was making a guess by myself, and I am not saying this to be hurtful whatsoever, I would have I would have put her in her mid-30s. And so I was very surprised to learn that she was 22. And I don't want to make fun of her because I think this is actually really sad. And I just want to make sure people recognize that you now have 22-year-olds, people that are at their effective prime in life. Like you're, you ain't getting hotter than you are at 22, right? And they are feeling the need to engage in these sorts of procedures to make them, they think, look better, hold on to their youth. I don't know what would be the impetus for a 22-year-old to go to their doctor and say, give me Botox. I, actually, I also don't understand why a doctor would do it, right? I don't understand why a doctor would look at a 22-year-old. I'd be like, I'm not touching you because you're perfect and you're not getting any better looking than this. There's nothing I can give you that's going to make you look younger than you are, right? And so I feel sad for her. And I feel sad that there aren't enough women that are proud you know, to age naturally and to just look as they are, that we live in this culture that is, by the way, being peddled by women. So I hate when people, oh, this is a patriarch. No, men don't like this, okay? Men will tell you over and over again that maybe they won't recognize if you do a little bit. But when you do a lot of it like that, obviously they recognize it and it makes you look older. So we have a, a cultural cancer with tons of actual cells of cancer in our society. But this, seeing young women like this that uh, feel this need genuinely just saddens me. So maybe theme of the show, say a prayer for Shauna Faith, emphasis on her last name, Faith, and maybe she will find that she does not need to do these procedures because of course there's going to be someone that should love her for who she is, but the, it's got to start with her. She's got to love her for who she is first. Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health. You need a consistent nighttime routine to function at your very best. So if you're struggling with sleep, you should check out Beam. It's not just your run-of-the-mill sleep aid. It's a concoction carefully crafted to help you rest without the grogginess that often accompanies other sleep remedies. Several people on my team use Beam's dream powder to sleep better through the night, and they show up very much ready to work. Other sleep aids can cause next-day grogginess, but Dream contains a powerful all-natural blend of magnesium, L-theanine, and melatonin to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Now available in delicious flavors like cinnamon cocoa, chocolate peanut butter, and mint chip, better sleep has never tasted better. 
And today, my listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder, their science-backed healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. You just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. If you find yourself struggling to sleep, give it a try. Get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice at checkout. That's shopbeam.com slash Candice and use code Candice for up to 40% off. All right, guys, moving on. There is an issue, another issue on the internet, and people are very divided on who is right and who is wrong. I want to tell you, this is a pretty serious issue because it has even divided us here at the Daily Wire. Uh, I think that it's coming to a divorce. The Daily Wire, we just want to, every, every commentator wants to go their separate ways, every commentator, because we cannot agree on this issue. So we're turning to you guys for help. So I'll show you the video. There is a woman just set it up at a bar restaurant, and she's holding a crying baby. And there is a woman who does not appear to be sober who is yelling at the woman who is holding the crying baby at the bar. Take a listen. I mean, <laughs> you're 22, get out. I'm 27. <laughs> get your baby out of a bar. You guys are idiots. Why would you do that? Why would you do this? We're dead. He's having fun. No, he's not having fun. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. He's not here. Look at her. He won nine thousand. Get your get out of the bar. Jamie, is that your name? No, it's not. Get your get out of the bar. You have a baby in a bar. She's filming you, and I'm actually you to leave. gonna call the police. They're bothering you. You're, you're bothering you when you're harassing them. They have children. Are you proud yeah, in a bar? Yeah. 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 You're proud. Yeah. I'm going to. Okay, so there's a lot of information that we don't have here. It, it looks like it's a bar restaurant. Just to be clear, this took place in Texas. Uh, obviously, the baby is screaming. So I know the, the, the mother there says the baby's having fun. It doesn't sound like the baby's having fun uh, to me as a, a mother with young children. Let's see what Matt Walsh said. So Matt Walsh on Twitter said, insane that so many comments are siding with the dumb, vulgar, drunk lady cussing out a young mother for disobeying a rule the drunk lady has simply made up on the spot. Okay, fair. It's it's not a rule that you can't bring a baby to a bar. He is absolutely correct about that. Uh, and he's also correct about the fact that this woman is vulgar and drunk. And it's vulgar. Why are you saying get your effing baby? I don't like saying effing baby at all. Even if you disagree with the fact that she's in a bar, which could be the circumstance, that is not the way to go about it. So I'm going to agree with him. He goes on and he says, they serve alcohol at almost any sit-down restaurant. The vast majority of sit-down restaurants have bars. Are we supposed to never bring our kids to any of them? And he adds on there, I had lunch with my kids at a sports bar a couple of weeks ago. They had kids menus, lots of families there. Very normal thing out in reality. I've done it dozens and dozens of times. Again, very normal. Have people on this website ever been anywhere in the actual physical world? Well, you know what, Matt Walsh? I have been places in the actual physical world. So let me say that. And I am a radical when it comes to bringing children to restaurants. You guys know this. I've talked about this on the show. I think your children should be a certain age before you bring them to restaurants. I, be, I view going to restaurants as a, a privilege. And people go out to restaurants typically when they're trying to enjoy themselves in some capacity. And when you have misbehaved children or screaming children, there's a lot of misbehaved children and a lot of screaming children. And I would imagine that Matt Walsh's kids are not misbehaving right? Uh, but I do want to point to the fact that this woman in that video says, how old are you? 22, you know, get your baby out of the bar. Maybe what actually happened was, and yes, you are correct, that it's not a rule that you should have a baby at a bar. But I just want to point out to you, Matt Walsh, that you are famous. You are famous for saying that just because you can doesn't mean you should. So I'm throwing that right back in your face, Matt Walsh. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yes, you can bring a baby to a bar, but you probably shouldn't. And I'm going to say you definitely shouldn't because if I'm so radical, I won't even bring a baby to a restaurant. You can imagine where I'm at at bringing them to a bar. And it does look like this woman is standing. So I don't think that his example of sitting at a sports bar with his kids with menus applies here. Like maybe she just got up to pay her bill, but I'm going to guess that there's more of the story that we're missing. And maybe this was just some 27-year-old woman that wanted to go to the bar 
and brought her baby with her, which I disagree with. I just don't think that you should do that. Not because it would bother people, but because I don't think that that's an appropriate place for a baby, full stop, especially the baby crying. Baby's probably crying because there is way too much noise at a bar, and it's that baby, that cry is an infant cry, I know, because I hear it. I've been, I've just been having children for three years, and I can recognize the age of that child just by listening, and I'm, that baby is about five months. So, Matt, hate to throw your own words in your face. I don't want this beef in the streets, but there's now beef in the streets. Just because you can does not mean you should, my friend. It's no secret that our healthcare system is a subject of considerable debate today. If you've watched the news, you know that U.S. pharmacies are not only running out of basic antibiotics, but the current wait time to see doctors can be up to four weeks. You can't imagine a more helpless feeling than someone in my family getting sick while a supply chain issue or doctor's wait list kept them from a life-saving medication that they might need. Thankfully, my family has a medical emergency kit from the Wellness Company. This kit can treat over 39 different medical issues with prescriptions like ivermectin, generic z pack and amoxicillin. The medical emergency kit gives you peace of mind in unforeseen medical emergencies and resource shortages. Every kit includes a medical emergency guidebook as an educational resource for safe use. Don't wait until it's too late. Get your medical emergency kit from the Wellness Company today. Visit twc.health slash Candice and enter promo code Candice for a 15% discount. The process only takes about three minutes online and it could not be simpler. Your home medical emergency kit will ship right to your front door. Don't wait. Visit twc.health slash Candice and enter promo code Candice for your discount. All right, guys, moving on and jumping into some of your comments regarding episodes past. These first set of comments, of course, are pertaining to the Diddy lawsuit. By the way, I do want to issue this correction because I always try to be precise. On yesterday's show, I said that allegedly he murdered someone. We don't know whether or not that person that he allegedly shot survived because, as we pointed out, the media didn't cover it accurately. They said there was a drive-by shooting. There was no follow-up. So I don't know if that individual survived or if that was just would have been an attempted murder, but I always want to be precise and the papers, the actual lawsuit just stipulates that Diddy allegedly shot the individual multiple times. It looked like a lot of blood. It looked like that person was very much injured. But again, we don't know whether or not that individual survived the alleged attack. This person writes, this is actually terrifying because it all makes sense. Everything from the media to what's trending, calling men to who wear dresses, baby girls, as if it's normal and cool, and men just being simply sensitive and feminine, the world needs to wake up. Yes, the world needs to wake up. I don't know how many times people can point to the fact that there is a pedophile ring. Uh, probably most notoriously, many episodes ago, we covered the string of crypto people that were mysteriously dying. Obviously, crypto would represent a threat to banking institutions, and that's could be why they were targeted, but one person in particular, hours before he was found dead in the ocean with his wallet in his pocket, tweeted that the Mossad and the CIA were running a pedophile ring in the, a, ped a pedophile blackmail ring in the Virgin Islands. And that happens to be where Jeffrey Epstein's island is. And the Virgin Islands is also something that is mentioned as a place where Diddy hosts his parties, allegedly, according to the lawsuit. So it is time for the world to wake up. And yes, I am aware that even talking about it puts me at danger, as many of you guys have pointed out. But I just feel that this sinister dark ring, it needs to be exposed. You know, our, our children have to grow up in this world. Moving on, Queen Yu writes, I am in the entertainment industry, was born into it, and it is very dark. I myself have been approached by Diddy's people and was given a stipulation and told it's what I have to do. It's a part of the business. He wasn't the only one. Cassie coming out freed this heavy energy. Maybe, just maybe one day, real music and entertainment will return. Yes, and we it's putting together the pieces of what happened to real entertainment. What I point to all the time, I grew up listening to real music. Now it is just filth. We are being sold drugs through the process of making people sing music that is demonic. It is demonic. It is entering our souls, your ears, your eyes. Everything is entering your soul, whether you believe it or not. Gladys writes, I am glad that P. Diddy is getting exposed. The man has been scamming artists and terrorizing people for decades, but his money and power has always saved him. A pure example of the evil Hollywood industry. Yes, it's a gang. It's, there's no question. It is and always has been a gang. And it seems to me that it is a government-sanctioned gang. Regarding COVID, which I touched on yesterday, and I do want to issue a correction because a lot of people were saying to me in the comments, well, Kenneth, some people did get really sick. It's not just a cold. Yes, I had COVID 
three times. I think twice while I was pregnant, and it was like a flu. I should have said that one time it was literally symptomless, which is why I was saying that for some people it was literally just a cold. And then uh, the second wave, there were like three iterations of COVID. I think the third one that I got was very much like the flu, but again, I have no idea why we were treating it like it was something much deeper or darker or scarier. Patricia writes, I was a critical care nurse. I took micro in college, multiple infection control courses in acute care. My state's acute level infection control course to run an infectious disease department in a hospital. And after 9-11, I took my state's state police terror course with infectious disease part. Every word and every mandated action that came out with COVID went against every single protocol. I knew it had to be lies. Yes, so who were behind the lies? Who, who even is the CDC? Like, we did not elect you. Who are you guys? Who, who is making these decisions that can radically transform our entire society? Unelected bureaucrats. It's insane. Absolutely insane. We should not be listening to them in any capacity. Lastly, Julie Gray writes, we all remember the Tuskegee experiment. Let us never forget what our government can and will do. Yeah, they will can and will do what they have always done. They will poison you. Uh, they will make you sick, and then they will sell you the cure. That is the story. Once you appreciate the history of big pharma, there's no way to have any other reality other than that. You will not come out of it. If you are actually educated about the history of big pharma, you will realize that it is and always has been a scam that is meant to further injure us through the mechanism of fear. If you want more about that, then you got to check out my series, A Shot in the Dark on The Daily Wire, because I saw some of you commenting, Candace, what do you mean polio wasn't real? I am telling you exactly what I am saying, that the government, that polio was, yes, of course, there, a, a small portion of it, it was a real virus, but also the government mass poisoned people with DDT that they were spraying on children at the time, which has a paralytic effect. But again, you got to go to A Shot in the Dark on Daily Wire Plus if you want to learn more about that because there's only so much I can say here before I will get banned. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time that we have for today, but we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode.